In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a reverse shell and take complete control over a computer. For that, we're going to use some pretty cool techniques, including social engineering, Metterpreter, and our trusted friend, Metasploit. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how hackers can encrypt an entire computer using ransomware attacks. Hello, my friends. My name is Dan Duran, and I hope you're doing fantastic. Oh, yeah. One note. This is a beginner's tutorial and it's meant for educational purposes only. So set up your own lab and practice the principles of ethical hacking and penetration testing. So go get your coffee, get ready and let's get going. All right, so I have two VMs in here. I have the Kali Linux as well as a Windows 11 machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is power up my terminal. Go into sudo su. And I'm going to look at my IP address. And there it is. 10.211.55.4. And I'm going to do a quick end map to see who is out there. End map. Send end map SS with no ping on the network. So let's see this. 24. Entire subnet. And let's see what results we get. There you go. We have a few systems in here. You can see that IP address 5511 is a Windows 11 machine. So that's the machine we're looking for. 5511. There you go. Okay. So the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to power up my SC toolkit like that. And I'm going to choose number one, social engineering attacks. From here, I'm going to create a payload and a listener. So I'm going to choose option number four. And we're going to use option number two, which is Windows reverse TCP interpreter. There you go. We're going to enter our IP address, in this case, 10.211.55.4. And the port, we're going to name it 4444. So now we're generating the payload. Perfect. Now, do we want to start the listener? Not yet. There's still work to be done. So I'm going to power a new tab in here sudo su and in here i'm going to see the status of my apache all right so i'm going to power up apache start service apache 2 start now if we go to our own address in here 10.211.55.4 you'll see that a patching is working. Amazing. If you look at the screen, you can see that the payload was dumped on root.set. All right, so what I want you to do is now copy root.set payload.exe, and I want to put it in the var www.html and we're going to name it something else. So in this case, I'm going to name it hello.exe. So basically what I'm doing is just putting that payload online in my local computer. Let's navigate to bar www HTML and LS. And there it is. Hello.exe. So now in the victim computer, you will see that if I go to 10, dot 211.55.4, as you can see. So basically what hackers do is they put executables or other type of infected files, such as Word, documents with macros or Excel sheets or PDFs online on infected websites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into 10.211.55.4 and I'm going to type in hello.exe and download this file. 
And of course, Windows is not going to allow me to download this file because this is a very basic payload that I created. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is that all my security system, so my Windows firewall, my virus and threat protection are completely off in this machine. Usually hackers use way more advanced techniques to be able to send out payloads. This is very basic. As I said, this is a beginner's tutorial on how hackers do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my Kali system and I'm going to start listening. And that's going to prompt my Metasploit to start the TCP handler. Now I'm going to put this side by side so you can see what happens. I'm going to click on the download and I'm going to click on keep. Keep anyway. As soon as I click on open the file, then we can see that the interpreter session has started. So what are we doing here? Once the interpreter session is started, then I can type in sessions minus L to see the sessions that are active. And you can see that I have one session active and then I put sessions minus I and the name of the session. And then this is my interpreter. Then the next step is just to type in shell. And there you go. Now I'm completely controlling this computer. You can see that my who am I says that it's uh, Dan Duran. And if I do a dir, then I see all the files. Let's get out of here. Let's go into CD. Let's do a uh, dir again. And let's go into users. So CD users. There. CD Dan Duran. And I'm going to go into desktop and let's check this out. There it is. And I have a few text files in there. Let's look at the Windows machine. Users, then they're in desktop. There it is. So what do hackers do next once they have control over a computer? It's very, very easy. So the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into CashCat, which is a ransomware simulator. So CashCat, CashCat, GitHub. There it is. Click on it. And I'm going to download the files. Now, CashCat is completely harmless. It doesn't do anything to your computer, but it's a simulation for ransomware. So I'm going to download the latest files right here. Save. I'm going to go into my downloads open folder. And here it is. I already downloaded before and then I unzipped it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my second window here. Let me clean this up. Now I'm going to copy home Kali downloads cashcat.exe and I'm going to put it right on the bar www HTML like that. Now, if we do an LS, you see the cashcat is right in there. If I go back to the Windows machine, let me just clean this up a little bit. So CLS, let's do a curl minus capital O. And I'm going to type in the IP address. So 20.211.55.4 slash cashcat.exe. And let's see what happens. There you go. Oh, it's time out. Oh, sorry about that. It is 10. So, <laughs> okay. Curl minus capital O 
dot four slash cash cat exe. There it is. Let's do a dir, and you can see that cash cat is right in there on the machine. Now let's look at the Windows machine. You can see that is in there. So this is happening without the user even knowing. So now I'm going to type in start cashcat.exe and see what happens. If I bring in the Windows machine, you can see that all files have been encrypted. If I click out of this, you'll see that my files are now encrypted. I can't really do anything. If I click on CacheCAD, of course, then you'll see the operations that happen. And to get back, all I have to do is just type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. Everything is decrypted now. All the files are there. I really hope you liked this basic video. If you have any questions, make sure you put them down below and I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay secure.